A couple of words here about static routes and default static routes in particular as we wrap up this section. Some important stuff here because we want to keep our routing tables complete and concise. We know that the router is going to parse the routing table. It's going to look through the entire routing table for the best match for a packet that it needs to route. And the thing is, with you know smaller IP tables, you know six, seven routes, it might not matter. But in some production networks, you might see routers that you know the IP routing table is two or three screens. And what we want to do is keep that table complete. We want the router to route packets wherever it needs to route them to. But at the same time, we want to keep that table concise. We want to shrink it down a little bit whenever possible because it does make the overall routing process much more efficient. Default routes can really help us accomplish that goal. And they're so helpful under certain circumstances that our dynamic routing protocols, RIP, EIGRP, OSPF, they'll either allow the creation of a default route or the distribution of a default route under certain circumstances rather than give a router a full routing table. And that's one of those things that sounds pretty vague when you read about it or you hear me talk about it. So let's have an illustration here. This will really help. Let's say that router 5 is so deep in your network that no matter where it's sending packets to, whether it's an internal network, whether it's going outside your local network, the next top IP address is always going to be 10.1.1.6. Whatever packets router 5 has to send through, it's going to go to 10.1.1.6 no matter what. In this case, it really wouldn't make sense for router 5 to have a huge routing table because whatever it does with that lookup, what's the next top IP address? 10.1.1.6. So it would be in our best interest and the best interest of routing on router 5 in particular to give router 5 a default route and just say, okay, you know, any packets you're sending, send them to 10116. And you might not even want to run a routing protocol on router 5 at all. You might just want to give it that one default route and then that's it. So that, of course, begs the question, if static routes are so great, especially default static routes, why use dynamic routing protocols at all? Why don't we just have static routes on every router and that's that? Well, the answer is a term that we come back to a lot in networking, and that is scalability. And in this case, it's a lack of scalability because we have to assume our network is going to grow. We're going to see that during our subnetting section. We're going to see it in some other sections as well where you can't just always assume, okay, there are going to be 20 hosts on this segment over here, and that's going to be it or we're always going to have these four networks, these four subnets in our network, and that's going to be it. We're never going to have any others. You can't make that assumption. And the thing is, then you add one network to your, you know, excuse me, one subnet to your network, and then all of a sudden you got to visit every router in your, in your network and say, okay, you know, IP route, et cetera, et cetera. And sooner or later, errors creep in. People can't get to the new network. It's pointing to the wrong place. Something goes wrong where dynamic routing protocols with one simple little command, the network command, all of a sudden that new subnet gets added and it gets advertised and it's just a lot more efficient and it's a much more scalable solution. Now I know someone out there is working on a network that has 7,000 static routes and you're, you're sending me a tweet right now. <laughs> hey, our network works just fine. I know there are networks that use only static routes. And that's fine, but it is not a real scalable solution. And that's why we prefer to use dynamic routing protocols. Our networks are going to grow. Now, static routing can be really fine in a pinch, and it can be really fine for small networking. You know, you could have something go wrong with a configuration in your dynamic routing protocols. And meanwhile, maybe people can't send their packets outside of your network. Well, while you're fixing that, you could just do a static route quickly and say, okay, all packets go this way, and then that's it. And so again, it's, it's, it can, they could be used really like a tourniquet, you know, it's like an emergency situation and they're okay for small networks, but again, it's not terribly friendly to a growing network. And in most of today's networks, you're going to use RIP version two, especially you're going to use EIGRP and especially OSPF. RIP version two, you're probably not going to see as much of as those other two, but that is going to be the first routing pro protocol that we introduce you to. And that with a description and plenty of lab work is coming up in the next section.